What's up, everybody? Hope you all had a great day. Um, getting into this episode of GH, listen, somebody need to whoop Victor old ass. I don't had enough of him. <laughs> I am getting so sick and tired of Victor. Oh, my God. Like, in a good way, I'm getting sick of him. Like, his shenanigans. Like, he just act like a pervy, old, horny-ass man. Like, he got some type of... Like, he's some type of sex fiend or something. Like, I don't know what's wrong with that man. Like, Lisa was just sitting there in her thoughts. You know, she got a lot going on. Between trying to help Willow and be a donor for her between grieving Brit still and now the whole Scott debacle, she got a lot. I'm pretty sure it, like her mind is just going, you know what I'm saying? And she wants to be alone. Here come Victor coming over there. Um, just completely just messing with her train of thought, um, and messing with her vibe. And, you know, for a moment she was vulnerable with him, you know what I mean? Like, even though she didn't want to be around him, she she became vulnerable with him, you know, opened up to him a little bit about, you know, her still grieving Brit and stuff like that. And, you know, he was talking about Valentine and whatnot. And they had a moment, you know, it was a moment where he was showing vulnerability and, you know, Victor was actually showing that he can be human. He could be a decent person. Then she started opening up, talking about Scott and, you know, why she's upset with him. Here go Victor. He turned a beautiful moment, what could have been a nice moment into him being a jackass again because he's sitting there gloating and all happy that you know scott is temporarily out of the picture i say temporarily because i believe him and lisa can work it out and you know he's sitting here acting like a fool and at that point that's when lisa was like all right i'm done talking to your ass and he tried to sit there and really like put the moves on her like trying to you know rekindle some shit or get her alone or whatever like so they can have, spend some time together I'm like, you have no shame about your shit, do you, Victor? Like, that old man just ain't got no type of shame. Um, And Liso was over it at that point. Liso let him know, like, listen, she would rather be alone for the rest of her life than to ever mess with Victor again. And she made it very clear to him that he would never touch her again in any type of way. And I love it. I love it. I said, go ahead, Liso. You know, she just let Victor ass know, like, you ain't never going to get none of that kitty cat ever again. So you can, you know, get that shit out your mind because you ain't never going to touch that. You ain't never going to look at it. You ain't going to never see her Hello Kitty ever again. And I'm happy. Shit, you don't need to. Um. So anyway, Robert done brought Eileen to uh, the safe house where Valentine and Anna are. She was shocked as shit to see Valentine. Um, so they had some questions for her. They wanted to know, like, why she started working for Victor in the first place. Basically, it was for her career. Um, he promised her, you know, some political help or whatever, you know, to help her career because she wanted to advance. And she never would have gotten involved with him had she would have known it would have turned into what it turned into, which is murder, because that's not what she signed up for. Um, and once she started seeing what he was doing, it's like it opened up her eyes that, yeah, I fucked up by getting involved with him. So they wanted to know, like, when did Victor start confiding in her and stuff like that? Basically, she admitted that her and Victor used to sleep together casually. They used to have a casual, you know, fling. Um, but it stopped once that explosion happened. That's when he started growing distant and stuff like that because he was pissed about the Ice Princess Diamonds. Um, then she started telling them about Holly and how she knew that Holly was the one who shot, um, Lucy. Um, but she doesn't know Victor's plan, like his big plan for the ice princess and all that. She don't know what that is. So Anna and Valentine pretty much want her to go back and seduce Victor or do whatever she got to do to get back on Victor's good side so he can start confiding in her again. Um, cause they're trying to figure out like what is exactly is he after? Because they're sure that Luke sold some of the Ice Princess diamonds. Like, he sold it. So, the ones that they have should, you know, be the coordinates to whatever Victor's trying to hide. So, they're trying to piece all that shit together. I was so disappointed in Eileen. Because she done went to the Metro Court, met up with Victor. Basically slid him her room key. Trying to, you know, make up or whatever. I said, I know your old ass ain't. You out here a prostitute? Cause that's pretty much what that is. I was looking at Eileen like, girl, get, get you some shame, <laughs> go your ass home and get you some shame and get you some holy water and just bathe. Cause you ought to feel dirty right now. You really out here prostituting yourself for Victor. 
Ugh. I said, ugh, the shit that you got to do. Like, girl, you, you willing to get on all fours for that man just to get some information out of him? That is tacky. I'm like, girl, go go get you some shame. Like, Eileen, out of all the men you could throw yourself at, you going to throw yourself at Victor just to get some info? Like, come on, there got to be another way. Like, make the man some dinner, you know, apologize for your foolishness, something. But you got to go up there and spread eagle for him. Mm, 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 mm. That is sad. Just mm. <sighs> out here just hoeing herself out, pimping herself out. Mm, 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 mm. Um, and you know Victor gonna happily take it with his little horny ass. <laughs> Victor is a little freak, I swear. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, so Cameron done came home, um, found Liz all laid out sleep on the couch or whatever, taking a nap. She done try to wait up for him or whatnot. He thought she was starting that sleepwalking shit again, but she said, nah, that ain't what it is. So we got some good news from Cameron. Well, maybe not so much good news for the show, but good news for, for the character. Um, he got a soccer scholarship to Stanford. I said, well, I'll be damned. Well, good for him. But that would mean that he would have to move. So I'm guessing William Lipton is out. Cause I think he's already on recurrent status as it is. So I think he might be out. I don't think we got an official word yet on if he's out or not. But with this news, I would assume so. But that's good for Cameron. You know, he's going to go out here and make something of himself. Um, I would much rather they keep Cameron around, though. You know, I feel like there's definitely a lot of story potential with him. Um, I'm actually surprised that Liz actually broke down and told him everything that happened between her, Nicholas, and Esme about her, you know, helping Nicholas keep her hidden and stuff like that. I was shocked that she told Cameron. I was shocked, but I'm glad that she did because it's pretty much public knowledge at this point. So it's better that it's coming from her rather than somebody out on the street, you know, one of his little friends or somebody or somebody at the schoolhouse or something. You know, it's better that it's coming from her because I think I think he was upset when he heard about it because he was still trying to process all of it. But he understood, you know, why she did it, even though he's still processing and he's upset. I think he would have been even madder had he found out from somebody else and not her. So that's why I say it's good that it came from Liz. But um. I'm glad that he pretty much, you know, hugged her and stuff like that and said she was brave, you know, to come forward because shit, most people wouldn't have. Um, they would have kept trying to cover that shit up and made it worse. But, you know, she did. She came forward. Um, she did the wise thing, cut herself a deal and threw Nicholas ass under the bus because that's sure enough what I would have done. Um, so I think that was that was smart of her. And, you know, she was actually proud of Cameron. You know, she's happy as she should be proud of the son that she raised. Um, and the man that he's turning out to be, um, I'm pretty sure his biological dad, Xander probably would be proud too. Well, he ought to be cause Cameron out here doing the damn thing. I was proud too. I ain't never been that proud of a character in my life, but I was proud. I said, look at this boy getting a scholarship. Go ahead. Um, that's some good shit. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Esme is just on a tear at this point. Like she did not trust Laura at first because she was pissed that Laura didn't tell her that Nicholas held her captive or whatever. And Laura was like, shit, I just found out not too long ago myself. Um, and Esme feel like she can't trust none of the Cassadines, but Laura had to correct her. She was like, I'm not a Cassadine, so <laughs> I don't fall into that category. And I was like, true that, true that. But she pretty much trying to tell, um, Esme, like, you got to put that baby first. You know what I'm saying? You got to make a decision that's going to impact the child's life and you know she need to think about what's best for the child and being in a prison ain't what's best you know um laura pretty much trying to be on esme's good side at this point because it's beneficial and laura doesn't want a war but i see that that's avoidable at this point laura's trying to broker peace you know like she told spencer she wants this thing to be amicable you know find a solution that benefits everybody but spencer's not trying to hear that you know what I mean? The only solution Spencer wants to hear is Esme handing that child over because he doesn't want the child around Esme. He pretty much wants to cut her out. Um, and you could tell Spencer was fed up. I heard it all up in his voice and his demeanor. He is fed the fuck up. Like, the, the, especially when he called Esme that woman. When a person say that woman or that man, you fed the hell up at that point. Like, you just don't give a damn at that point. And I could hear it all in his voice. I was like, yeah, he he does. Like, ain't no compromise. I don't see Spencer compromising. I don't see Esme compromising. Um, 
I just feel like whether Laura like it or not, it's going to be a war. You know what I'm saying? Spencer is in war mode right now. He's a Cassidy, whether Spencer likes it or not. And every time he tries to run away from the Cassidy heritage, at the end of the day, he's a Cassidy. Once Cassidy's backs are against the wall and they're in a war with somebody, they're in a war. You're going to see that dark side come out. And I think that's what's going to happen. I could be wrong, but I just see it, you know. And like I said, Laura's trying to stop this from happening. But whether she likes it or not, it's going to happen. There's no compromise. Um, so Trina came or whatever. I thought that was thoughtful of Trina coming in and support her man. And she bought the baby a new bl uh, baby blanket and stuff. I thought was was pretty dope. Um, when they were wheeling Esme out to take her to transport her uh, the Spring Ridge, she had that little flimsy ass hospital blanket on that baby. My thing is, it's cold as shit where I am. So I know it's cold in New York. It got to be like 28 degrees, 30 degrees at night during the day, you know, depending. It's cold as hell. I'm like, if it's cold up here, it's cold there. And you got that thin little blanket. And I know it's colder than a polar bear's pussy right now. And she acting like she didn't want to take the blanket that Trina bought. Because Spencer tried to give her the blanket or whatever. She told me, no, I'm good. I'm like, girl, take the blanket. It's cold. Take the damn blanket. Put your pride to the side and put that baby first. It's freezing. Um, And Laura pretty much had to urge her to take the blanket because she was like, listen, you can't never have enough blankets. And I agree. It's a baby. You know what I'm saying? You're going to need a bunch of everything. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a baby. They run through everything. Um, So I felt I detected a little shade from Esme, too, when she told Laura, oh, Laura, you have to come visit and stuff at Spring Ridge. I want you to come visit me and the baby at Spring Ridge. And, you know, Laura was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to come visit. So Spencer was pissed because he was like, I don't want my brother being raised by that lunatic. And, you know, Trina tried to reassure him that he could visit, too. I'm like, um, Trina, I, I don't know if she heard, but from what I heard, he's not on the visitation list. I heard her specifically say, Laura, you can come visit. So. <laughs> I don't think it'll bode well if Spencer just showed up when Laura showed up to visit. I don't think it'll go over too well. So I'm I'm just pointing that out. Sorry, but he's not on the visitation list. So, yeah. But it's going to be a war. It's going to be a messy ass war. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to be a hot mess. So anyway, moving on from that. Um, Marshall talked to the doctor and apparently he doesn't have schizophrenia. He doesn't have the genetic markers for it. So apparently he was misdiagnosed all them years back and he trying to figure out why he was misdiagnosed. I really don't see the mystery to that of why he was misdiagnosed, because I feel like for one, it was over 40 years ago. And even today, people get misdiagnosed all the time. It's not really uncommon. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to turn that into a story or something like that about him going on this search of why he was misdiagnosed. I don't know. But. To me, I don't really see a story there. Not unless they're going to make it interesting. But other than that, I don't see a story other than it was just a general accident. So, I mean, it happens every day. People get misdiagnosed all the time. I mean, it's not uncommon. So, But at least he could, at least he now knows that that's not the case. But I can understand why he would be a little pissed. He stayed away from his family for over 40 years for something he thought he had that he didn't. So, I get it, you know. But maybe they'll run some more tests and see what the hell else is wrong with him, you know, because he definitely had something wrong with him. Um, And he was trying to make Curtis, you know, talk to Portia or whatever. Curtis wasn't ready to talk to her. Like He was not. And, you know, she was asking him to come home and he, you know, asking where he stayed and stuff. He was like, shit, I was at the Metro Court and I'm not ready to come home. <laughs> um, You know, she was asking him about the DNA test and he was like, listen, he was like, Trina doesn't want the DNA right now. She's not ready. You know, I feel like Portia, even when she was talking to Trina, I feel like she's trying to force things that she should stop trying to force because she thought Trina was there to see her. Like, oh, do you have something to say to me or whatever? Trina said, no. She was like, I didn't come here for you. I came here to support Spencer, not you. Um, I felt like that was a little cold. It was a little colder than the other side of the pillow, but I get it. Um, Portia just need to slow down. You know, she was asking Trina about her school project. And Trina was like, listen, we're not there yet. <laughs> like, we're, we're not in that space right now. So 
it's kind of like a don't ask me questions about school and this we're not in that 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 lane right now again so she you know let her mother know at least that she does miss her but i think she just still needs some time away to process this still and i feel like that's what irritates me about portia i feel like she's trying to force everybody to let this go and my thing is it's not on portia's timeline it's on their timeline they have a right to be upset with her they have a right to go their separate ways and want to just be by themselves or live somewhere else to get their mind right and i feel like she's trying to rush that process and you can't you know what i'm saying i also feel by the conversation she was having with curtis and trina that she wants everything just to go back to the way it was that's not how that's gonna work not right now it's gonna take a little time for that and she has to respect their choice, you know, respect their space, you know, just let nature take his course. You know, when they're ready to come in and have a conversation with her and reconcile, then they will. You can't rush them and force them. You know, this is her mess. You know, like this is a 20 year lie. You know what I mean? Maybe even a lie by omission, but shit, it's a lie. You know, 20 years of deception. You think they supposed to get over that in five minutes? Absolutely not. She need to just get them they, they time. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, actually, I think that's everything in this episode. Yeah, that's everything in this episode. So yeah, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought and I will see you all later. Peace.